I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. I should also say this work uh, was born out of a World Bank IG evaluation study that I was working on together with Telco and Raghavan. And for that work, we were looking for indicators uh, to assess countries' performance in domestic revenue mobilization. And we found that most existing indicators, in fact, focus on achieved outcomes, right? So classic example, just quoting revenue to GDP ratios. And the, well, most of these indicators suggest that low-income countries perform quite poorly in, in DIM, right? And of course, one of the main drivers behind that is that these indicators do not consider um, differences in the fundamental economic conditions that countries face, right? Um, and therefore, sorry for that, the laptop still shows it. I, yeah, it comes back. Um, and therefore have a sort of natural um, tendency to underestimate the performance of governments and countries that face um, less favorable conditions, right? So that is the motivation behind looking at um, estimates of tax efforts. And what we're doing in this paper is basically to add a, another tool to the toolbox um, with differences, pros and cons, I guess, to um, other approaches such as the one just presented by Kyle. Now, to illustrate that a bit further, um, on the left you see box plots of revenue to GDP ratios by income group. And you can see that clear positive relation, right, where low income countries just um, achieve much lower levels of, of revenue to GDP ratios than richer countries. And of course, part of that may be due um, to um, suboptimal tax structure, inefficient administration, etc. But the idea is that um, another part of that is also due just to differences in economic fundamentals. And on the right hand side, we try to capture this by a normalized uh, composite index, accounting for some of the factors that are considered important in the literature. And the idea simply is that low income countries also feature, for example, higher shares of agriculture and GDP, which is often considered a hard to tax sector. They tend to have relatively less international trade, which is easier to tax sometimes, or they tend to have higher age dependency ratios, so corresponding to narrow tax bases. Right. Now, what we do in this paper, we construct a new measure um, of DRM performance at the national level that does account for these differences in domestic economic conditions. Um, we leave out institutional and, and political factors um, for a reason. Okay? They may be considered then in a, in a second, secondary step. And um, what we argue for, what we use, are two tools um, from data env envelopment analysis, which is a non-parametric approach. Okay? Um, so I think basically at the other edge of the spectrum uh, of, of, of tools, with stochastic frontier analysis being somewhere in between. Okay? So this is purely non-parametric. That means it's of, of, a, of a descriptive nature, um, yeah, which comes with certain benefits and certain limitations. Now, the output variable is just government revenue as a percentage of GDP. The input variable is intended to be a composite index that proxies for the enabling domestic economic conditions for DIM, such as the ones that you've seen on the previous slide. I want to give you a very brief intuition of the method what DA does. Okay. Um, so if this is the sample of observations, country year observations, um, Kyle showed you the stochastic frontier. Um, DM will look uh, similar, um, but I think it's even more simpler to grasp. So in DA, each unit on the frontier is considered to be efficient simply because there is no other country in the sample that is achieving um, a higher output with the same amount of input. Okay? So if you consider this country, for example, of course there are many other countries in the sample with a higher revenue to GDP ratio, the output, but these countries also feature significantly more input or you know, more favorable economic conditions. Okay? So each country on the frontier is said to be efficient. The countries inside, their efficiency is quantified based on the distance to the frontier. Okay, so the efficiency gap. And then the whole insights we derive in that paper are based eventually on these um, efficiency estimates. 
Okay. Um, now I said this is a, of a descriptive nature. Um, so there are some advantages in terms of you know, the technicalities that we are not going to talk about here with the assumptions involved and so on. But we think the main advantage really for using this to inform policy making is that the, the outputs, these efficiency scores, are super easy to interpret. So um, you do not have to deal with T values, P values, uh, issues of endogeneity, etc. It's purely descriptive. So based on, or if this measures, if, if the variables are selected in a way that, that you care about, if this is your measure of efficiency, then it's basically as simple as, as interpreting a Gini coefficient. Okay? So you have a score that is normalized to range from zero inefficient to one efficient. And for example, an efficiency score of 0 0.6 would mean that a country is currently achieving 60% of the revenue to tax, uh, the revenue to GDP ratio that it should in principle be able to achieve given of what other countries in the sample with similar enabling factors are already achieving. Okay, that's the, the intuition and, and the way to interpret this. Now I'm going to show you some results. Um, these are based on a sample of 118 uh, low and middle income countries. Okay, we exclude high income countries here. Um, the, the output variable government to GDP ratio comes from the very nice UNO wider data set, which we selected uh, a few years ago, mainly because it had the best uh, country coverage. Okay, so for this application at least, even better than uh, what we found than, than IMF data sets. Um, the input variables come from the World Bank, but I should say um, this, I mean, we selected them based on the literature review, but they can be tailored or fine tuned to the particular application at hand, okay? So this is merely a suggestion. The main contribution here is, is in the method, basically. So this is the main uh, picture. You can see two frontiers here. The upper dashed line is the frontier for the whole sample. The lower is the one for low-income countries only, the black dots. And what you can already see here is that the low-income countries all tend to be located relatively closely to any of the frontiers. Uh, in fact, many of them are closer to the frontier um, compared to the red or the blue dots, the middle-income countries, despite the fact that most of the low-income countries have significantly lower revenue-to-GDP ratios. Right? And the whole insights that we derive um, in that paper are basically based on the distance of these dots to the frontier, the, the efficiency scores. Okay, here are box plots of these efficiency scores by income group and region. And if you remember before I showed you the box plots of just revenue to GDP ratio by income group, and there was this clear positive relationship. Now, looking at the efficiency scores, the relationship is basically flat. So meaning that a lot of the low income countries are in fact now very efficient once considering their on average less favorable conditions and more efficient than many of the middle income countries. Right? If you look at geographical regions, we find that the issue of high or low efficiency in DIM is not concentrated in any single region. It seems to be the case that every region has some countries with high efficiency, some countries with low efficiency. Here's some more number just to uh, illustrate that once more. So revenue to GDP ratio, low income countries are about half of what upper middle income countries achieve. But their efficiency score is just slightly lower than that of middle income countries. And again, the intuition is that these efficiency scores also take into account that low income countries have weaker enabling conditions um, that are shown here in the second row, uh, second column. Now we can also check changes in efficiency over time um, between 2012 and 2019 here. And you can see that in fact, low income countries um, were catching up, right? at least many of them. And on average, you have the biggest increase here. For regional um, averages, you can see this also applies to South Asia, um, Latin America, and perhaps less to MENA and ECA with um, negative, um, negative changes. Now, uh, the global average um, is 62, okay? So this suggests, on average, these 
low and middle income countries in the sample are achieving 62% of the revenue to GDP ratio that they should in principle be able to, which I guess is somewhere in the range of what other people find. Okay, so to conclude, um, obviously we are not suggesting this should replace uh, existing uh, indicators, but we think it might be a useful um, method uh, to add to the toolbox, um, mainly because of its easy way to interpret. Um, it also provides quite rich set of insights that can be used for other types of analysis. So for example, informing country level analysis. Um, one other advantage or, or difference compared to regression-based approaches is that in a regression-based approach, the, the slope that you estimate is always affected by all the countries in the sample, right? Every observation has some impact on the slope. Um, in, in DA, this is not the case. The efficiency of a given country is evaluated for a segment of the frontier, and this segment is only driven by countries with similar enabling factors. Um, and these are called peers in the DA literature. So we can identify uh, sort of the global peers of each country, and they may not necessarily be the neighboring countries or even countries in the same regions. They may be located somewhere else on the globe, but um, you know, might be interesting to, um, to, to compare to them in, in a more detailed analysis. Um, and what we do in the paper is we use the DRM efficiency scores then in a, in a second step in a regression framework, um, either as the dependent variable um, to see what might be driving differences in DRM efficiency across countries. Um, and there we then consider political or institutional, institutional factors as one possible explanation. Or you can also use the efficiency scores as the explanatory variable. Um, and then depending on what the left-hand side variable is, um, you may address different questions. For example, we are using World Bank Group support targeted especially for DRM as the dependent variable to see whether this World Bank Group support you know, tends to target countries with high or low untapped potential in DRM. If you're interested in the, the results, um, they are all in the paper or feel free to uh, come and talk to me. Thanks so much.